Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. If you don't know who I am, that tells me you did not come to Wednesday night worship last year. <laughs> I am Pastor Dan Johnson. I am the Executive Director of the Lutheran Dakota Shared Ministry at the Pine Ridge Reconciliation Center, a ministry of the South Dakota Synod and the Episcopal Church of South Dakota. I'm Pastor Dan. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you. I need to breathe now. Okay. Uh, for those of you who do not know me, I am the Executive Director of the Pine Ridge Reconciliation Center in Pine Ridge. Uh, it's a wonderful job that I dearly love, and you're going to hear a little bit more about it in my message. Those of you who do remember me or don't remember me, I was here last year from September through February running the Wednesday Night Worship and Confirmation, and so several of you got to hear me. Uh, they will warn you my messages are really, really long and dry. Uh, no, okay. You're all right. Uh, you'll hear more about me in a little bit. My wife says hi for those who have been asking. She's doing better. Uh, she's got some mobility issues still, but uh, we are celebrating our 15th anniversary this year, so we're going to do a trip through the Northwest uh, U.S. National Parks later in the year. Uh, but... I will also say, it's my birthday, so, you know. <laughs> but I will also point out I do not eat cake, okay? I have lost 35 pounds since November because I gave up sweets and basically gave up eating, but, um, <laughs> but I feel so much better now. We have a couple of announcements that I was asked to uh, uh, reiterate to you. One, they are looking for volunteers to help with shoveling. If you can help, please contact Brad McKinney, and we don't need to necessarily to sign up for a whole week. If you can only take a day, do that. And, and I want to point out that on the welcome meeting in your bulletin, the date is wrong. It is not Tuesday the 20th, it is Monday the 19th. So just be aware of it. It's tomorrow, 1130 in the fire center room. Ooh, there will be a potluck lunch. So, um, other than that, everything else looks pretty, pretty normal. We're, I appreciate the amount of giving that you guys have here. The diapers will definitely, we cannot keep size fives and sixes in stock, so I appreciate that. Let's continue our worship. Pastor David. Yes. I have an announcement. I am looking for somebody to help set up on Wednesday night for the soup and bread suppers. If you're available, please contact me. Thank you. All right. Let's begin with our call to worship. God's laws revive the soul. God's precepts make God's precepts make our hearts rejoice. God's word is more desirable than gold. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. <laughs> God of love, when we look inward and in our eyes with ourselves, we see where we have lived solely we are not our God. We have sought after our own gain rather than the good of all. We have not loved you or our neighbors as ourselves. We have betrayed and denied you in all we have done in our mother. Create us clean hearts of God that we might be God, whose unfathomable, that word I can't say it, sorry, God, unfathomable, okay, I'm not going to try it one more time, you all know what word I'm trying to mispronounce, okay? God, whose love went to the cross for our sake, now forgives us our sins and welcomes us all over again into the promise of eternal life in Christ's name. Amen. I invite you to join with him, 319.
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Holy God, you speak to us in our days through your word, and inspire us by the Holy Spirit to believe and be transformed by the love, grace, power, and wisdom we find in your scriptures, that we might, as changed people, carry forth your vision of peace and justice into our community and the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Alright, is there any kids that want to come up for a message? I brought candy and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Mary's coming, I see. Right? Hey, I'm telling you, on Wednesday nights, I would hand out candy to everybody. So. Alright, so we're going to skip that part at this point, and we're going to move on to the scripture reading. If I recall, someone else is going to come up and do the reading. Uh, oh, I will move, okay. <laughs> Our scripture reading this morning is uh, the psalm will be read responsibly, Psalm 19, verses 7 through 10. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure. Enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and drippings of the honeycomb. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, fields, and in persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. So one of the things I was responsible last year for on Wednesday nights was confirmation class. And I honestly think some of the adults that sat around listening enjoyed our talks as much as the kids. A few years, hey, you remember. <laughs> and I'm there. So I'm uh, uh, a few years ago, I, I worked at a school in St. Louis where I was a church in a school, and I taught confirmation three times a week for an hour a week, or an hour a day, to 20 school students. 20 eighth graders doing confirmation for three hours a week. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> but I read, during, during our session on the commandments, I read this verse to them. And one of the things they noted is we had pointed out that the commandments are divided into two sections. Three verses, or three commandments talk about our relationship with God. Seven go to our relationship with one another. And if you reread, if you reread today's reading, you will see that Jesus only asks him, are you keeping the commandments about how we treat one another? Now we can spend a long time talking about the, the eye of the camel and can a camel do it? And was it a gate? Was it really a camel through a needle hole? Whatever. The truth is, none of us can get to heaven on our own, whether we have money or not. We all need. Christ. But see, I want to focus on the fact that Christ talked about the relationships with one another. Because what I do every day is I live the gospel, I preach the gospel every day with my actions and hardly ever with my words. I live in Pine Ridge, South Dakota, the poorest county in the country. The average life expectancy is roughly 30 years younger than the rest of the country. Teen suicide is 150% higher in Pine Ridge than it is in the rest of the country. Unemployment is roughly 84%. Alcoholism, poverty, drug abuse, all of these things tear people and tear families apart. At the center, we provide hope. We try every day to provide hope. Two and a half years ago, we took over operation of the homeless shelter in Pine Ridge, the only shelter on the reservation. We currently average roughly 38 people a night in our night shelter. We service over 60 people every day in our day shelter. We're keeping track of some incredible numbers. Since June, just in shelter meals, not even sandwiches we hand out to the community, not counting food we give to the kids, we have provided over 12,000 meals. Your diaper drive is very important to us because we go through diapers left and right. Anybody who went out and bought some, you know how expensive diapers can be. So imagine not having money to pay your, to buy food and you've got a kid and you need diapers. So we provide hope. Each day, we have up to 60 people come to the day shelter where they get to do laundry, take a shower, get some counseling. We try to help them take the next steps to move on. The cool part is, this year, we have two different levels of night shelter. We have the low barrier where as long as you're behaving yourself, you can come in. That's designed to keep people alive. But we also knew we had a large group of people that were working hard to improve their life. The truth is there's people in this room right now that are on the verge of being homeless. All you need is a bad paycheck and lose your job and you're not far from being homeless. But we deal with people that are in the worst cases of their life. And of those 38 people a night, 31 of them are in our transition shelter where they have to be clean, they have to be sober, and they have to be working to improve their life. 
We drug test, we PDT, and we work with them to figure out what they need to become self-sustaining. Problem is, we get them clean, we get them sober, we even get them adjusted, we still have no place to put them. We have no home. There are 4,000 families on the waiting list for homes in Pine Ridge. We signed, a, we signed a treaty with the tribe way back when. The federal government agreed to provide housing, food, health care, and education at no charge to the natives. It's not a freebie. When you bought your house, you agreed to give the bank money so that you could have your house. The natives gave us access to all the other land if we agreed to take care of it. And we don't do a good job of it. We currently have four young ladies that are in a mentoring program with the job club. All four ladies are homeless with no family support. One of them has been homeless since she was 14. She's now 19. What is her life going to look like if she's on her own at that point? And so we brought her into our program, and we are working with these girls. We're doing girls because they're the most vulnerable, but we have several guys we're working with also. But the girls are working to get their education completed. They are learning job skills. They are learning how to take care of things. We had a conversation the other day about budgeting. Because I kid you not, they got their first paycheck and it was all gone in two days. Because they've never had that kind of money before. And they didn't know how to adjust to that. The center also provides hope by providing warmth. I was asked if I want some quotes. I'll take any quote that I can get. We're going to take some of them with us today. We hand out quilts, blankets, hygiene kits, whatever we have in it goes out almost as fast as it can come in. I will be honest, I keep a couple quotes on the side because we also work with the Victim Services Group, and if they get a battered woman, we want to make sure we have a, a stash for them. We also have an energy matching program where we provide up to $200 in matching funds to pay for electricity or propane. We've given out $45,000 so far this season. We've helped over 200 families this season. I had a lady, she came in asking about the match. She had her light bill with her. If she didn't come up with $170 by the next day, they were going to turn her electricity off. She had gotten a match from another organization or the tribe on propane, but a propane furnace does no good if you don't have power. Trust me, I know that one for real. She looked at me and said, I don't have the money for a match, but I'll go to the bank tomorrow and, let, and see if they will let me overdraw my account so I can bring you money for a match. Is there any doubt I told her not to do that and just wrote the damn check and got it out to her? But this is what we deal with every day. We deal with people that are in the worst spot possible. The tribe had an energy program where they were doing similar to what I do without the match. They were just paying electric bills. We're five months behind in paying bills. Three weeks ago, we had call after call because power was being turned off across the res at different houses. They had done everything they were supposed to do. They went and got the help that the tribe promised them. But the tribe messed up and didn't get the help out. And now their power's turned off. This is what I deal with every day. Now, a few weeks ago, we had that really uber ugly cold. Everybody remember it? Were you all nice and snug and warm in your homes? I was not. That night our generators died. Our generators provide the power to push the fans, to push the heat out of our propane heaters 
through these industrial grade temps. At negative 29, our generator said, uh uh, we ain't doing this no more. And so my partner Abram and I both jumped into action. And we went out there and we got, we jury rigged the system. We took the two outlets that we had from the tribe to run our lights and put them into the heaters. And we brought all every flashlight and lantern that I had and we brought them in and got them going through the night. The interesting thing is we had guests that told us they didn't even know the power went out. They were sleeping the whole time. Now, on a slightly more humorous note for some of you, at negative 32, porta potties freeze solid. <laughs> I kid you not, our porta potties froze completely solid. The porta potty company's response was, all right, we'll bring in new ones, because they could not get in and thaw out to clean them. This is what we deal with. And we also have to try to figure out how to thaw porta potty when it's not Just be, oh, come on. But I say all of this because when you're doing these diapers and these other ministries that are helping people, it's what we are called to do. Those seven commandments that Christ was talking to the man about are all about how we treat each other. Christ summed it up in two. Love God, love your neighbor. Sadly, he had to explain who his neighbor, your neighbors are, but that's what God does to us. This is what we're called to do. Now, I tell you this because you get to take pride in what we do at Pine Ridge. Because we are a ministry of yours, whether you know it or not. You guys support us, and I mean, I love that. We get regular support from you, and I, I know we're going to be getting diapers and all. But we are a ministry of the South Dakota Senate. Part of my pay comes out of the South Dakota Senate budget. Other support for the ministry comes out of the South Dakota Senate. So when you guys are sending your funds to the Senate, that is in part going to support us. I will tell you a little secret. Because one of the things I've run into when I come up to churches like this is most of you have never been to our center for a ministry, for a immersion. And rather than trying to get a whole group together, what we're going to do this fall is we're going to have a week where we're going to have open immersions. So if you want to come down, you can just sign up and we'll put you with a group. And that will be uh, probably in October. I could be mean and make you come out of the hills in July, but I like to come here in July, not go there. <laughs> but, uh, so that's going to be coming in the fall. I want to thank you for your support. I want to tell you that you are living the gospel every day. And you support other people. It's what we're called to do. The rich young man walked away grieving because his possessions were more important to him than God. It didn't mean he didn't get to heaven. Because none of us are worthy. It is all because God loves us so much, he sent his son. And because of that love, we get to love others. God loves you, so do I. Amen. <coughs> Ladies, was I too loud back there? No, no. no okay. I, said, I, I was sitting back there, they wanted the recruitment to stay back there, but no, I didn't want to have the one in front of the turn and wag a finger at me, so we're not embarrassing anybody here. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go with our hymn 808 from the ELW, Lord Jesus, you shall be my son. <laughs>
Worship continues with the offering.
Only got, oh, sorry, I don't have it in the bullets or something. Uh, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that at all times and in all places we give thanks to you, our Lord. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and broke it and gave it to all his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together, as the body of Christ, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Gathered as one, let us pray as the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but that deliver us from evil. For thy name is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
body of Christ, broken for you. Gracious God, and for the sake of the meditation of your immeasurable grace, as grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of God. Amen. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you. Shower you with mercy and fill you with courage and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Share your bread. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.